So my name is Ralph Friedrichs. I'm here with a friend of mine that I've known for a lot of years, and uh, he's actually really uh, well familiar with the area. This was my stopping ground, as you know, and I used to get drunk here all the time. I used to do 10 to 15 shots of vodka, so you've probably seen a lot of that. How do you feel about the neighborhood, and what do you think we need to do to change? We need more guys like you to try to talk to them so they can start changing, because there's too much drinking here. they got to slow down with the drinking and the alcohol and the drugs here. They need people like you who goes out and support the community. They need somebody to change this place. Right. This place yeah. needs to be changed. And I agree with you. Last week I ran into a lady down the road here, and she said if, and exactly what you just said. If we just had one person walk, just to give a phone number so when somebody's in need, they have somebody to call out to even talk to them. I think that, but uh, and like you know, <laughs> you cannot fight any addiction without, right. without the other half, and the other right. half is the power of God. And there you go. You can have God without addiction, but you can't have addiction recovery without God. There you, you go. You have to have you know, the, the, the good Lord constantly. And you know, I said it this way yesterday. I was on Channel 11 yesterday, and I said every night. We all wear slippers, shoes, and sneakers to our bed, right? right? We take them off and we leave them at the edge of our bed. Right. Why not put it under your bed? So in the morning when you wake up, you have to go on your knees to go and get them. There and you then go. praise God and say thank you for another day. And it's That's beautiful very art. nice. Very nice. And we need to do something. I'm so glad that you coming out here every day, trying for us, you know, trying your best to talk to these people. Because these people, well, by time, Friday, Thursday, they're drunk walking around. You're Nobody's right. doing nothing about it. Yeah, my first interview last week was right over here, standing here. And the guy was telling me he spends $300 in two days just on beer. On beer. And I said, well, how about just changing a little bit? How about just drinking one day to start with and, and sober up on Sunday? And he said he won't. Wow. But you know what? With the power of God, and I say this every day on my videos, with the power of God, anything is possible. And I'm there proof of that, and I'm sure you're somewhat proof there of that. Go. I mean, you have a lot of God in you already. Sure. Uh, I, I've Only since I sobered up, started seeking the Lord a lot more. But that, that yeah. was God talking to me. So, But I do appreciate uh, you letting me put sure, this on. No and, and this will just go on one of my videos. Uh, but I think when people hear a voice, it means more than my voice all the time. Uh, so let me shut this door. Hold well on. Go over here. And my name is Ralph Friedrichs. I'm here with a young lady in laundry mat. We were just talking about her grandfather had an, uh, you said alcohol addiction, right? Yes. And uh, how old was he when he died? He was 64. Did he die because of the alcohol? Yes, thing? he didn't stop. Uh, he just that drank. Alcohol was his food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like me. That's how I used I used to drink 10 to 15 shots. Uh, a day. I live in the Hamptons, but this was my stomping ground. I'd walk from my house on Pagoda to the liquor shop, and by the time I went from there back to my house, I drank all that. And uh, I, since then, went to college and became an addiction recovery coach, and that's what I do now. And uh, I do believe that we need to go out, and it's people like you and even Pat sitting there and me to help other people. Uh, just as much as the church gives out food, we need to give out advice on how to fight alcoholism. But your grandfather, he died of alcoholism. And he, he uh, was diagnosed with um, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and he didn't take care of himself, he didn't take the medicine. What did he drink, beer or anything? Any alcohol? Actually, there was a type of liquor that they did back in my country and they were like bury it. So, so almost like uh, down south, the moonshine, homemade liquor? Something like that, yeah. yes. But it was so strong that it, half a bottle would knock you out. Oh, so when my grandmother would feed him, he would like try to eat a little bit of food, but the liquor was his drink right after. Oh, I know. And then you would hardly ever eat because you fill up on the liquor so much. Exactly. And I would drink to the point where by the time the afternoon came, I was half asleep. People wouldn't even talk to me. Uh, couldn't talk to me because I was up. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's people like you because you know somebody who died. And, and uh, so if you just spread the word, if you see people walking the streets drinking with beer, I mean, I'm not saying go and say don't do that because these days people will kill you for the stupidest things. But you have a, a situation, and believe me, this will be on uh, one of the uh, airings. And, uh, it's, it's just your story. You're just telling your story. But if you uh, ever do want to go and take a look at some of my videos, you can go right there. Uh, there's about 130 videos on my channel, 11, 1, 2, and 3 on YouTube. So take a look, okay? And it was so nice meeting you. My name is Ralph Friedrichs, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Let me shut this off. Bye-bye now. Yes? Okay, so this is Ralph. Do you mind if I give you a name? Just your first name. Uh, I'm just with Pete. And what Pete is doing is he's walking around their old stopping grounds of mine, which used to be my alcohol haven, I used to call it. 
I used to walk from my house, Pete, right. to the liquor shop and back and drink 10 shots of vodka. Okay. So what Pete is doing is he's actually cleaning up the neighborhood, which is uh, very applaudable. First of all, I want to tell you that. But you. tell me what you're finding here. You're finding like things like... Well, we're finding a lot of uh, drug paraphernalia, needles, alcohol bottles, whether it be small little uh, nips or big, big uh, liter bottles, broken, uh, a lot of trash. People are just to the point where a lot of people, are a lot of good people in this community, and what we're doing is we're trying to take the community back. Right. Uh, unfortunately, whether it be the state or the county, they're dumping on this area with all the low class people, uh, and we're trying to make it make it better. Right. Uh, there's a group of us, about three people. We've been doing this since March, and we're trying to get more people involved now. The boys, the local Boy Scout troop came down to the village hall one time and said, Oh, the Eagle Scouts need projects, and this and that. We went up to the village, like, we gave them the information. We haven't seen a Boy Scout since the village meeting. Wow. Uh, we're trying to get the younger people involved, but they don't want they don't want no part of it for some reason. Right. You know, one of our local merchants who just opened up a, a barbershop in town, he says, I'll get people. And I gave him the information, and he had gotten two people today, they were unfortunately young kid children. Yeah. But he wants to start them young. Right. So, uh, but hopefully we can get more people going. Well, every Sunday we do this. Oh, great. You know, and uh, they, can, they can contact uh, the village hall okay. to clean up. You know, ask just volunteer. It's on a volunteer it's basis. It's on a volunteer basis. Usually we start around 8.30 in the morning. And we're done, thank you, and we're done around 10.30. Today we're running late because we're very short-handed today. Right, right. And, uh, you know, we're finding issues with, even with the code enforcement area, because we're finding people living behind vacant buildings. And they're not, I guess they're not able to, because of manpower, go back and be victim, because code enforcement has no jail facility. Right. And, of course, the 7th Precinct is short-handed. One car, I think, for this area. So, you know, they should. Uh, and of yeah. course, your job would be a lot easier if we, uh, yeah, we had I mean, a better way of fighting addiction in the first place. Right. I mean, then you wouldn't find the things you're finding. I, I think also, too, that the, the state has to say, well, and I I'm, I don't want to put the blame on the people in the community, but a lot of people here have second places because they bought when it was very cheap and they're using it as rentals. And the state's going after those people who are like, oh, We'll give you a thousand dollars to house this family there, or Section Eight, or right. welfare, or whatever. And you know, and it's you know, it, it comes in all all denominations. Yeah, so it's it not just one type of person. No, you know, of course. It's, it's all people. It's all to and a lot of people, you know, but because of the, the layoff, which I was a victim of back in 2010 with the crisis, they can't get a decent job again or whatever. You know, they're finding other ways, and they're just, they're giving up. And right. we're trying to get it so people don't give up. Right, well, that's, you said it. That's, yeah. It's the don't give up attitude, because once you give up, you gave up, and yeah. that's pretty much it then. But, you know, it's people like you that are really helping the community. Well, I really appreciate I, I really wish that my job, on my end of it, uh, I don't know if you're aware, I mean, Pete and I go back a lot of years. Right, right. Uh, I've always been involved with eyeglasses, it's been my life, but I just recently graduated from a university, also now a Master of Recovery Addiction Coach. Okay. And that's why I'm doing this. Okay. What I am doing is pro bono, trying to help people and giving them coaching, not just for addiction, but also for life coaching. Okay. And uh, my thing here is, right. is to help them, because if I help them in the first place, you'll have less to worry about at your end of it. Right. So in exactly. conjunction, we kind of work together, me in the right. start and you at the end. Right. You know, and, and uh, the whole thing, too, is um, maybe you come down to one of our village meetings. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the next meeting is like on the 14th. On the 14th? Okay, what time? Down, uh, 7.30. Okay. And if you come down, you can just walk to the, to the table and say to Mayor, Mayor Beyond, and you say, listen, I'm a resident of this area for thousands of years. I still have a home here. You know, I right. recently relocated. This is what I do. Can I have two minutes or three minutes to speak? Okay, and that then, sounds good. And then you can tell more about your program and bring some more flyers. Yeah, definitely. You know, and hopefully hand in hand, this will turn back. I mean, I know a lot of people sit here and say, like we, we went for a walk on the dunes when Hurricane Sandy first hit. And one of the gentlemen was here. He says, back in the 50s, we had 30-foot dunes. Yeah, well, now you don't have, you know. And, you know, but after 10 20 years... 20 years ago, you and I were thin, uh, we were thinner. Well, we were a lot thinner, yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, in 1970, when the dunes were 10 feet high, you should have done something then. It's right. It's going to get down to nothing. Right. But my thing is, if you start now and try and help people, if you help one person, 
Maybe that one person will help Absolutely. somebody else. And you know what, Pete was so right, because I say during every show that I do, there are two people that I'm looking to help. One, hopefully, would be whoever is listening to my audience, and I guarantee I help me. Right. Every every time, because this is my recovery program for myself, and this is what I created. I mean, I do this on the weekends. You know, I'm taking away from my family, from my But, but you're going to be blessed from but God I'm, with I'm this. I'm helping. I'm, yes. I'm doing it because it's more the environment. You know, I work with I work with lab animals. I'm, I work, I'm an animal lab tech for wow. a university, yeah. medical school. And I also uh, did wildlife recovery. Yeah. So if I see an animal distressed... If that animal survives and can go back into, you know, if it goes back into the wild, I'm happy. If yeah. it can't, it stays in a cage in a zoo right. or a facility, at least it's alive and I did right. my part. Well, that's good. And you know what? It's the 14th, right? You said? The 14th at 10.30 in the Village Hall. Okay. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to be there yeah. and I'll bring some of my business cards. Yeah. Let me just give yes, you one of my cards. And uh, it's and a pretty simple thing. Help. Okay. Can't get any easier than that and help, okay. right? And I certainly appreciate you doing this interview, Pete. It's always a good seeing you. And when, this is on YouTube? Uh, it's going to be, um, if you go to this website, well, let me see, is my okay. other website on there? Because I have two websites. Clear uh, the other one is Clear Views. Did we put it on this one? Oh, it's right there. You see clearviews.info? Oh, yeah. yeah. On clearviews.info, there's over 130 videos already. Okay. They average about an hour and a half. I have sponsors. I do my own I do. My, I'm the host, the producer, the director. Okay. Take a look at some of the videos. There's a topic almost every day that affects each one of us in this community. Okay. Even you with your animals, believe me. Right. There's always a topic. Well, like I said, you know, I mean, like when I go to work and stuff, I run into different people. I mean, yeah. I... I got so many, I'm wearing so many different hats right now, I, uh, because, right. you know, I started with the animals, I go to tech, of course, here, I meet somebody, I say, oh, can I take a picture of your alligator? Yeah. Someone there says, well, he knows this person. Oh, yeah. Now I'm holding the boa. I did the uh, facility with York Decks to Nature. Wow. At uh, the tri Hamlet Fair, uh -huh. boa constrictor. So, I mean, I have a lot of people. Well, you, you know, all those hats that you're wearing. It's really good, especially in our age group now, yes. because it keeps your mind going, keeps you fresh. Right. And more importantly, not for you, but for me, it keeps me away from doing other things. Right. Well, I'm still getting seen now. But that's, uh, that's, that's all right, Pete. Right. Always uh, good seeing you. Good seeing you. And uh, we will definitely, I will definitely see you on the 14th. Okay. But uh, you'll see me here next Sunday if you're here. I come every Sunday you're for about an hour. Understand, understand. Yeah, I kind of, I was going to start going to the church. I know, huh? Well, well next Sunday, we're going to be over by Wave Press. We're going to be doing Wave Press. Maybe I'll stop over there and I'll okay. catch up you. Thanks, Pete. So what I'll do is I'll keep in touch with you. Email wise. Yes, hi. Good that was you. How you been? Good. Thanks, Pete. Thank you. Thank you. Good seeing you. I certainly will. He's, he was just up here visiting. Really? Yeah, but he's back down in Myrtle Beach. How's your mom doing? My mom is, uh, thanks, Pete. Thank Lives right around the corner uh, by King Cullen. Oh, she's still over there. Like yeah, yeah. She was there. Yeah, so I moved. I live out in Hampton Bays, but I come back to my uh, stopping grounds because I used to be a really, really bad alcoholic. And uh, since then, I graduated from school, and I'm an addiction recovery coach. So what I do is I come Amen. down. I come down to my stomping grounds. Okay. Pro bono, I give uh, any coaching to anyone that wants it for free. Okay. I give you, not for you, but if you know somebody. Sure. Give me it. some of them. Definitely. I know a lot of people. Everybody comes to this fork so. in the road in life. Mm -hmm. You're either going to go through addiction or recovery. I'm here to help go to this side. Okay. But it's not just for addiction. I do life uh, coaching. I do all that. How's your daughter doing? Good. Uh, that your mother? Me. How's your mother? My mother's I'm good. sorry. My niece is good. That's what you mean. Yeah, and your dad, that sister. was your father over there. No, 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 no. Oh, and that's yeah, that, yeah, that was, was my yeah. husband. Oh, okay. But, but uh, you know, if I you, have um, eight years clean. Good for you. What do you? How do you uh, stay clean? AA or? Because I don't use AA. I use my own methods, which is I, channel 11, channel 1, 2, and 3 on YouTube every day for two-hour videos. Good for you. No, yeah. mine is just I got involved with the community. And good for you. And I see that. And yeah. you know, I was just, I've known Pete for a lot of years. And yeah. That is really good. If you ever want to talk about what your yeah. bad, uh, bad past as far as you're drinking, like I do, and there's no shame in talking about it. I can either do it on audio or on video, and uh, you'll be seen all over, the, not just the country, all over the world. Really? Yeah, I have about uh, 5.2 billion followers right now worldwide. Really? Yeah. Oh, i got to get in touch with them. Yeah, so get in I touch will. with them. Let me give you my card and uh, get in touch with them. I would like to do that. And uh, that it doesn't have to be on video because a lot of people for some reason, and, and you know, during my videos, I always said there's no shame. People will respect you more for coming clean oh, and talking about it than if you're just hiding like I used yes. to do in the closet. Yes. So 
If you want to, I can come to you with a video camera, and I'll definitely put you on, okay? okay. It's good seeing you again. Bye-bye. You How's your wife doing? She's good. She's waiting for me. She's in the car down there, the caddy. Oh, Because okay. we come out here for an hour on a Sunday. That's the only time I really have. But I felt coming to my stopping ground where I did my most drinking is the best place because I know the area. Yeah. <laughs> see, I left my stopping ground. So I left here when I was doing my job. Well, see, I did, too. I, I lived home when I was ready. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, for me to come here because I, I really do. I, I used to work in that liquor shop to my house on Pagoda and drink 15 shots of vodka on my walk. And I used to do exactly what you're doing here, so just throw my shots into the woods and stuff. So, so what you guys, I was just saying to Pete, if I can prevent in the beginning, you won't have to do this at the end. It's all teamwork. So. But we'll talk, okay? Yes. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. All right. I'll de definitely do that. Thanks. Bye-bye. Take care, Pete. Bye-bye. Yeah, I was just talking to them. They invited me to speak at the next uh, village meeting. So, oh, okay. yeah, I was just, I'm actually friends with a couple of people there. And, uh, oh, right. yeah, but, uh, yeah, so maybe at uh, the 14th, 730, if you want to stop okay. by. All right? Oh, okay, thank you, Pat. You too. Hey, how you doing? Would you mind if I give you one of these? I'm just trying to help the neighborhood fight addiction, uh, addiction recovery from drugs and alcohol. If you know anybody, including yourself, I do it for free of charge. I'm an addiction recovery coach. Everybody faces a fork in a road, either addiction or recovery. Uh, been... Good for you. Uh, have you beaten it? Pretty much. Yeah. Every once in a while you still do? It took me 16 years to do it. You know what? It's never too late. I always talk about the book of life. It's the last chapters that are the most important in your life, you know? So, good for you. If you know anybody, pass that on, okay? Thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate it. Oh, uh, yeah, let me give you my direct business card, too, then. That'll probably help you even more than that flyer. Hey, got back from Florida. Oh, okay. What, does she have alcohol issues? Uh, or both? A little bit more. A little bit more, huh? Is that bad? Yeah. She's been going to the meetings. I don't know how sincere she is. Yeah, I love her, but I got no respect for her. Now, did you use AA, too? Because I try to use I, AA. I don't. I, don't, I, don't I, I use prison. Oh, uh, okay. I used the prison my own life, but I tried AA and it didn't do anything to me. I had to come up with my own way of... Uh, Pretty much, I mean, I still drink beer. Right. But that's it, I'll never touch. So I got my begin my whole life. Wow. And it took me 16 years prison sentence. 16 years? Wow. Say, what the fuck am I doing? But this was what my, what my 16 year prison sentence. Wow. And I'm still fucking fighting with bullshit. Not with that, but with them. I just got fucking extra, extradited for an apology. I got fucking slammed in Florida. For an apology? Yeah, they actually died. My life was good, too. I just got out got out in 2012. Wow. At 54 years old. And my life started falling into place. I was doing good. And they claimed I didn't uh, try and get my probation with Florida resolved. And I did. We showed up. February. I got. They came and put the bracelets on February. I was on federal probation the whole time I was here, too. Jesus. And they extradited you all the way down to Florida for that? Three weeks in the county jail, three, uh, a week to get the fuck there in the doghouse, then three or four weeks in the county jail there. And when I finally got to probation there, they says, oh, Mr. Toro, we're really sorry that uh, you got caught up in this bullshit, but it's right there to try to get this matter resolved. Wow. Because it's one of the first things my federal field focus to. Wow. And he offered bench warrants and all this shit. And that's all you got yeah, is an apology. Me. Yeah, and it ruined my fucking, he ruined me. I'm, I, just, I just got back two months ago. Five months. So now you're probably weeks. looking for work and all that again. And wow. I'm all fucked up now. I mean, I you know, I live, I live I'm going to be at the village uh, meeting uh, on uh, the 14th, talking about addiction. But if you on Sundays uh, volunteer to help clean up the streets, you can get your way into possibly working for their maintenance room because I know they're looking for help. You know, the construction maintenance and cleanup. Yeah. They they are looking for help if you go down to the village hall. Just ask them. But uh, you know. And I'm saying this with respect. I don't know what their criteria are for background. That's all I'm saying yeah. about that. You, you might want to just check into it. But I happen to know some people here. I ran for tr trustee years ago here. My name, listen, my name is Paul. Right now, my head's up my ass. I'm trying okay. to get the old lady's phone. Yeah, all right. Too much to think about. On there? Yeah, my number's on there. Give me a call. My, uh, on that piece of paper I gave you, yeah. 
Both my websites, over 130 videos, show your niece. You said your niece, right? Yeah, my, yeah. my, my sister's daughter. Yeah, show your niece some of those videos. It talks about everything. Well, what I'm going to do is going to pass it on to my sister. Okay. My niece has already robbed up about 40 grand. Wow. Know. She's young. She's 22. She's a gorgeous kid. She looks 17. And she's, she fucked up. I tried to talk to her. You know. And right. Like my sister just asked me to put her extra vehicle on the road, Jeep, which I used to use. Because I was driving without a license before, and I won't do it now because I'll go back to Florida. Yeah. I'm on parole now. Fucking state. You don't yeah. want to do that over. Okay, and I really don't want to do time in Florida again. Yeah, you use public transportation, bicycles, well, whatever. Well, it sucks. Yeah. That's my biggest fallback. To, to get a bus here on this road? To, yeah. To get it to work. We, we are with construction. Yeah. You know, it's... You have to drive to the site, pretty much, wherever the site is. That, or I used to use the Jeep and go to the train station because I would work Manhattan. I would take a two-hour trip yeah. back, two-hour trip back. I didn't give a fuck. And you don't want to take a cab up to the trains? It's like six, but, but seven time, bucks. Yeah, but it's by the time you figure that in and you figure in the train. cost of the trains. I know. You know, even if you're making 150 fucking dollars a day. It adds up at the end. A train alone is like 480 20, a month. It's $22. If you, get the, if you get the monthly ticket, it's not that bad. It's like $12 each way. Yeah. So it's 24 on the cab. You know, you're going 34, 50. Third forty-four dollars a day. Yeah, for making hundred and fifty a day is not bad. Right. I don't care. Because I don't after sixteen years, my friend, I don't give a fuck. I don't look to live extravagant no more. I did that already. Right. You know, I'm just looking it's nice not to use toilet uh, sandpaper or toilet paper. Yeah. You know, it's nice to fucking be able to pay my bills. I just came back right, I gotta go back to social services. Wow. And I haven't did that route since I came back. Yeah, you got a lot going on right now. It is what it is. I mean I'm a survivor. Yeah, you take one day at a time and I'm doing a fucking job, uh, down on uh, Montauk Road, Montauk Drive, whatever the fuck it is, I just put up a shed. I, I, I'm making it into a sauna. Yeah, maybe you can even put up like a little flyer up in there. And have I had flyers. There was another dude that lives around here who's crazy. The boy never fucked around. But he's like really unreliable. Yeah. I paid for her, my old my old lady to get a license, but she's in her ass up her ass now. She's got four kids. Wow. She's 54 with her twins as well. She started raising money. And you know, I, I paid for her license. I figured, all right, if I'm working on the books, I can get. Both of my one of my relatives are probably getting struck on loan, but then would that be a mistake too? Because she is not a complete angel. Yeah, yeah. And you got to worry about who you associate yourself with because of your probation. But you know what? Look at it this way. This is the way I would look at it. You had the hard things happen in your life. It can only get better from this point, and it certainly will. Uh, you know, listen, if you get a chance, stop down at the village and just ask them because I know they need people just to pay pay to where, clean up where this. Is the village? Uh, do you know where that little gas station is? Yeah. Right across the street. Down. Yeah, right across the street. Just stop in there and talk to him, okay? I will. Nice meeting you. you Take care, sir. I hope everything... Okay, terrific. Right. And like I said, I mean, I'll call you. Her name is Tiffany, my name. Okay. And maybe, uh, maybe you can do something for her. Maybe, and I'm going to be here the next eight Sundays around this time, because I moved since then. I live in Hampton Bay. Right on the other side of fucking uh, the Sunrise. Okay. Well, if she, if she, yep. Yeah. If she calls me, if you call me, I'll make sure I get to her. Well, my sister will probably definitely call. And you know what? She doesn't physically have to meet with me. We can do it over Skype. I can talk to her. We can do it over the phone. Just give her a report. My landlord, he goes to uh, the meetings over my uh, ice cream parlor. Yeah, yeah. All right, so he, I, I introduce them. But well, she looks for, she's still, I don't think she's had a bottom, bottom yet. You got to hit rock bottom. Because otherwise it's, but you know what? As long as she keeps plugging at it, that's the thing. If she does. If she know, does, right. She's a fucking good manipulator. Aren't, aren't we all when but we want is, some? <laughs> she is extreme. I never robbed my parents. No. I never robbed a dope dealer. Yeah. I used to, I mean, back, I'm 56, so everything back, nowadays was robbing cars. Yeah. And, you know, she she is a fucking dealer. Wow, wow. I mean, she's a fucking fucking hunt. Oh, jeez. My sister ain't been put the cheek back on her. I don't want to do it, but then I'm, I feel like I'm doing something for her. And right now, I don't really think it's the right thing to do. Right. Because that's going to open doors for her to do. Play her game. You know, and like I said, I'm not a firm believer in the meetings. I was forced to stay in the halfway house per choice to get my paperwork transferred back to New York when they extradited me. And uh, I see the shit that, that, that goes on. And actually, I lost my chain of thought. Well, the, the, the main thing is, is that uh, hopefully she, she'll hit rock bottom sooner or later. I hope so. Sooner or later, but I think it's one of two things. 